I gave ChatGPT a face, a voice, and wheels to move, and it turned into something smarter than I expected. Meet Saras, my personal AI robot, which can understand its surrounding and make a decision how to move and navigate through them. From listening to me to understanding what's in front of it to exploring spaces completely by itself. It has taken me months to build this along with my day job. A lot of 3D printing, wiring, debugging, and honestly, a lot of stubborn nights. But finally, it's ready. Hey, Saras, should we start the video? Always ready. Let's begin. Okay, to begin with, this is Saras. This has been my obsession for months. So Saras stands for Smart Autonomous Robotic AI System. It is also a short form of Saraswati, the Hindu goddess of wisdom. It runs on Raspberry Pi. I wired it from scratch, coded everything in Python, and added just enough AI to bring it to life. And honestly, it's pretty cheap to build. I didn't splurge. I just used components which were lying around in my house, or I bought some of the components which were easily available in the market. And it's not just hardware though. Saras can actually communicate with me when I talk. So when I say, "Hey, Saras," you can see it has started blinking. That means it's listening to me right now. I'll tell you in a bit how this works, but there was a purpose I designed it this way. It may look very minimalistic, but under the hood there are a lot of components. There are of course 3D printed parts. You have sensors, speakers, mic, a Raspberry Pi inside, which I'll tell you in a bit. We have four DC motors, wheels, and some of the wiring stuff which is under the hood. So let's talk about each of the components one by one. So let's start with the wake word. If you keep wondering why I keep saying "Hey, Saras." Now it has already picked up. Let me mute it first, and then I'll tell you in a bit. So as I was saying, why I keep saying "Hey, Saras," it's basically because it's its wake word. Just like Alexa or Google, Saras doesn't react until we say the word "Hey, Saras." I didn't wanted it to react to every little sound, and that's why I gave this a wake word like "Hey, Saras." Bingo. Now before we get into all the smart stuff, yes, I can control it the old school way too. This is just a basic manual mode I set up using a Xbox controller when I want to drive it around myself. Forward, backward, left, right, nothing fancy. But honestly, it helped me test everything early on. When things were still breaking and nothing was working, this remote control mode saved me more times than I can count. Initially when I was building this, the remote controller made all the difference. It helped me to debug faster and fix those issues. So yes, Saras can be controlled via Xbox controller, just like any other cool car. So before we move on to the next stage, I just wanted to quickly discuss about its display. So right now it's in neutral state, and whenever I say "Hey Saras," you can see it has started blinking. That means it's listening to us right now. And now whatever I said just now, it's trying to process that. So it's in thinking mode right now. Links ready to assist. Please ask your question or topic. I'll provide a response within 20 words. The talking mouth was just basically Saras conversing to us, and when we say nothing, then it has been gone into the idle state again. So these aren't just random faces; they have been configured in a way so that it can imply to us what it's doing at that stage, and they are saying in the way in the back end so that we can understand at what stage it is performing what action. It's simple, but it makes Saras feel alive. So by now you have seen it talking, but it's not just kind of a voice assistant setup. It's actually running a bunch of AI models in the backend, not just one. I have got a local model Llama. I have also got ChatGPT to run few benchmarks, and I am also using a local vision model called Lava. And they are all working together behind the scenes for different different purposes. When I ask something, my voice gets transcribed. It goes to the AI in the backend, gets processed. A response is received and text to speech is triggered so that it can respond back to me all on the fly. So again, let me give you a demo. Hey Saras, what do you do? I'm listening, thinking, and ready to assist. Waiting for your next command or question. So this was not hard coded. AI actually thinks what to respond whenever I ask a question. So let me give you one more demo. Hey Saras. Tell me a joke. Why don't eggs tell jokes? They crack each other up. Well, apparently it's not good for fun jokes. I'll tell you in a bit how these responses are curated and respond back to me. This is real-time AI-generated responses, not canned replies. 
All right, let's move beyond just the conversation because it can actually follow spoken commands too. Hey Saras, move forward. Hey Saras, move backward. Hey Saras, go left. So yeah, it can go forward, backward, left, right, stop, just through speech. Every time I say something, it listens, thinks about it, then moves. This is where it starts to feel less like control and more like collaboration. Okay, so this must be the coolest part. It can actually see what's around it. It uses a camera to take in its surrounding and then AI to understand what it's looking at. So again, let me show you one more example. Hey Saras, what do you see? I'll say that it's not perfect, but it has done a terrific job of describing me and the surroundings around it. So now that Saras can see and describe things, I wanted to try something a bit more interactive. So instead of just recognizing objects, I actually wanted it to move toward them. Hey Saras, go to the boxes. Understood. Going to the boxes. Looking for the boxes. It figures out where the object is based on what it last saw and starts heading toward it. Boxes spotted. Moving closer. And the best part? It knows when to stop right before bumping into it. Reach the boxes. It's still basic, but when that first worked, it honestly felt like magic. Hey Saras, go to the couch. Understood. Going to the couch. Looking for the couch. Okay, so now come the part I was really building toward. This is Saras in full autonomy mode. Hey Saras, start exploring. Starting exploration. There is no remote, no pre-planned path. It's looking around and making decisions. And I am giving it a kind of memory by saving each move and feeding that history into every decision it makes. So it does not go in circles. It checks for obstacles, it updates its path and it keeps going step by step until it's explored the full area. It's not perfect. Sometimes it hesitates, sometimes it overreacts, but it's moving, it's thinking and I didn't tell it where to go. Watching it explore like that completely on its own, that's when it hit me. I built something that's actually alive in its own little way. And once it's done exploring, it gives me a full summary of everything it saw, like its own little mission report. Exploration complete. Here's what I found. Robot discovered a residential area with various objects, including furniture, electronics, and personal belongings. It observed people interacting with devices, watching television, or relaxing in different rooms. The space appears to be cozy and well-maintained. Behind the scenes, I was logging every move it makes, so you can see here 
when the robot was making a move, how it reacted in the real world. Here we have which direction it went, how close obstacles were, and even what it saw at each point. All of that is saved run by run, and it uses that information to decide what to do next. Eventually, I can even use these logs to build a 2D map of my home. So Saras would actually know where it is and where to go when asked. So how does all of this works actually? Well, let me show you in the diagram. It starts when I say, hey Saras, a local wake word detector picks that up. Then it records what I said and transcribes my voice into text using speech to text. That text is sent to an AI model, sometimes Llama running locally, sometimes ChatGPT, depending on what I'm testing. The model figures out what Saras should do, whether it's answering a question, moving or just reacting, and sends that response back. Then its face changes, either a reply is spoken or it physically moves, depending on what I asked it to do. And through all of that, I'm storing what I saw, where it went, what obstacles it found, so it's never starting from zero. It's a bunch of small systems stitched together and none of it is exotic hardware. It's all stuff you can buy online. Raspberry Pi, basic sensors, a motor driver and that's it. Honestly, I didn't build Ceres to be perfect. I built this to learn. And along the way, it became so much more than just a weekend project. It started with few wires and random paths and now it can talk, explore and even make decisions. But this is just the beginning. There is so much more I want to teach it and so much more I want to learn. So what's next? This is just a first version of Saras and there is a still lot to improve. I am planning to build a better casing so it actually looks like a finished robot, not just wires with the screen. Right now the design's not perfect. I also want to bring down the response time. Some actions take a bit depending on the model. Right now, most of the things run on a Raspberry Pi. It keeps things affordable, but eventually I want everything to run fully offline. No cloud, no local server. Just Saras thinking on its own. So I have left room to upgrade to something more powerful later. So if you are interested to learn how I build this and you want a step-by-step -step tutorial or a video, let me know in the comments. I'll be more than happy to make that. And if you made this far, thanks for watching. This project had meant a lot to me and I'm excited for everything Ceres will become.